Moving on to an example, we have a bunch of functions here, three functions, and for each of them, we have to find their derivatives. And to do that, we're gonna be using the power rule that we just went over in the previous overview video. However, we're gonna be running into a couple of cases that we haven't run into before, so I'll explain how to deal with those for each function. So starting off with our first example, we got f of x equals x to the power of three plus x squared minus x plus seven. So we have this polynomial with a degree three here. Now usually, so far in the overview video, what we discussed was just dealing with functions that are just with x to the power of an n value by itself with no other functions added to it. So if it was just x to the power of three, we know that the derivative of that would just be three x squared. However, what if there are multiple other functions that are added and subtracted within a function f of x? What do we do then? Well, you can deal with each of those functions separately using something called the sum and difference rule. So for example, if we have f of x, and it's composed of other functions added or subtracted together, then we know that the derivative of f of x is just going to be the derivative of each of those separate functions added or subtracted together. So going back to this example, we can just treat each of these parts of the function separately and then just find the derivative of each of them separately. So let's get into finding the derivative of this function. So f of prime x would be the derivative of this function here, x cubed, using the power rule, bring the three down, subtract one from the exponent, we'd get three x squared. Then we put this addition symbol here, the derivative of x squared, same thing, power rule, it would just be two to the x, put this subtraction symbol. Now this x here by itself is like to the power of one. So if we take the derivative of this using the power rule, we would bring the one in front, and then we would subtract one from the exponent, so we'd be left with x to the power of zero. Well, anything to the power of zero is just one, and then one times one is one. So the derivative of x is just one. And then the derivative of this seven, we know that the derivative of a constant function is just zero. We went over that in the constant function rule overview video. So this here represents the final answer for the derivative of this function here. We just took each of these uh, parts of the polynomial and took their derivative separately and then put the respective addition or subtraction symbols and we get our final derivative to be 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Moving on to the second example, we got f of x equals 5x cubed. Now, again, so far we've just been dealing with functions that are by themselves in the format x to the power of n. So the derivative of x to the power of three we know is three x squared, but what happens when we have this constant in front? We haven't dealt with a situation like this yet. Well, we can use something called the constant multiple rule. So if we have a function and it's equal to a constant, so this k here is just any real number, times another function, well, the derivative of f of x would just be that same constant and then the derivative of that function that's attached to it. So going back to here, we can just take this x cubed and deal with it separately, find its derivative, and then we can just multiply that five back in by its derivative. So then finding the derivative of f of prime x, notice how this f of x is in the same format that we have here. So the five is like the k, and then the g of x is like this x cubed. So the derivative would just be the five, we would just rewrite the five as is, and then we would take the derivative of that g of x, which in this case is x cubed. The derivative of x cubed, if we apply the power rule, is three x squared. So now we can just multiply that five and three and we're left with 15 x squared. So that there is the derivative of five x to the power of three. So whenever you see a constant in front, 
you can just multiply that constant with whatever number you're bringing down. So we brought the three down, five times three is 15, and then we subtract one from the exponent, and we're left with x squared. So that there is the derivative of that function. Moving on to the third example, we got f of x equals the fourth root of x. So, so far we haven't dealt with any radicals when we're discussing the power rule. And the first thing you wanna do with any radicals is change them into an exponent form. So the fourth root of x, we know that's the same as x to the power of one over four. Now, if we rewrite the power rule, we said that if f of x is equal to x to the power of n, then the derivative of it is just gonna be n x to the power of n minus one. And we also mentioned that n can be any real number. So we can still apply the power rule on this because one over four is a real number. We haven't dealt with that yet. We haven't dealt with a fraction in the exponent. It's always been integers in the exponents. However, if there is a fraction in the exponent, it's the same process. So you just bring the one over four down. So the derivative of this would be one over four x to the power of, and then you subtract one from one over four and one over four minus one gives us negative three over four. So that there is the derivative for the fourth root of x. One over four, x to the power of negative three over four is the derivative of the fourth root of x or x to the power of one over four. Both of these functions are the same. So whenever you see any radicals, change them into exponential form. So usually you'll have some kind of fraction in the exponent. Same thing applies though, you just treat that fraction in the exponent as you would a regular number. You bring it down, then subtract one, and then you get your final answer. Now notice in this last question how we first had to manipulate this f of x algebraically a bit before finding the derivative. So you had to change it into an exponential form. And that's actually what's gonna happen in the next video. We're gonna have a bunch of functions where we're gonna be applying the power rule again, but the functions are gonna be more complex than these, and you're gonna to have to manipulate them algebraically before finding the derivative. So that video is the next one in the curriculum. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.